We're back and we're ready to start developing some muscle memory. Are you ready? I'm totally ready. For this class, we are working with treadle wheels. That means your hands and your feet end up working at the same time. It's complicated. For some of us, it's more complicated than others. <laughs> and I am one that had a hard time learning it. I hope you'll learn from my mistakes and you will make sure that you do this in order. It really will make it easier for you to learn. Treadle spinning wheels sometimes have two treadles, sometimes have one. On a two treadle machine, your feet will alternate. There are plenty of people who have two treadle machines that only work them with one foot at a time. I do that. So this is something that you can learn how you like to work it the best. My matchless has a single treadle, but it's actually for both feet or one foot. And I'll show you how that works. Most people don't operate their spinning wheels with shoes on. Again, that is a personal choice. I like to be able to feel the treadle with my foot without a shoe in between, but also a lot of people just don't want shoes on their machine. So that's totally up to you, but that's why I'll be working my stocking feet. I'm gonna aim you down at the wheel and we're gonna talk a little bit about the wheel. So I mentioned that my wheel only has one treadle. I'm gonna show you. The whole treadle, once I get my wheel going, the whole treadle goes up and down at once. And I can operate it with one foot, but many people do operate this particular wheel treadle with both feet. So you can do what feels comfortable to you, and it is kind of nice. On a single treadle machine, some of the treadles are more in the middle of the wheel and they're just big enough for one foot. In that case, you need to just use one foot. I learned on a single treadle, that's the reason why I generally only use one foot, but you can do whatever feels comfortable for you. With most wheels, it takes a little bit of practice to learn how to make your wheel go around smoothly. For the purposes of this class, we're first going to spin clockwise and then ply counterclockwise, but it takes some time to learn exactly how to make your feet work in order to smooth get your wheel to go around. Now, one of the most common things that I find as problems for beginning spinners is that they are treadling too fast. So it's important to learn also to do this kind of slowly and control your movements at different speeds in order to be able to control your whole wheel at different speeds. But most people have a natural rhythm. That's why wheels have different what's called ratios. If you have a natural rhythm, it's okay. You don't necessarily have to fight it. You might have to just change the setup on your wheel and that will go back to you learning more about your wheel and what it can do before you come to class. I want you to just practice making your wheel go around smoothly. And when I say your wheel, I mean this big wheel. But there's a few other things. Most wheels have some sort of spindle going around a hub. There are a few that don't have, that are completely flat and have no holes. But if you do have a wheel that has some sort of hole or open spindles, anything like that, it's a little bit better for your wheel to start it without touching the outer edge. That's because it is much easier to accidentally hit your drive band, can you see my fingers under it, and lift it up and pop it off. And that just makes things that much more frustrating. It's great to get in the habit of when you start your wheel by hand, some of them will just start with your treadles, but if you want to start it going in the correct direction with your hand, grab one of these spindles and just start it. It is typical for a wheel, it is not true in every single case. There are a few that don't have an open part. In that case, you can still generally start it with your hand by just pressing your fingers against the front of the wheel and pushing it. It's just not usually a great idea to start it by touching it on the outer edge. And you can just see how easily I get underneath that band. And then when I pull my finger away, I'm gonna pull it right off. If you do pop off your drive band, and you might, I just did to show you. What I suggest is that you put it back on your wheel however it needs to be, so whether it needs to be just on a whirl or whether it needs to be both on a whirl and a groove on a bobbin. Pop your flyer all the way back in. And then hold both sides of your drive band. Put it around the wheel as much as you can and then turn the wheel by hand, guiding the band back into the groove. 
it just popped all the way in. For the beginning, I'm gonna ask you to practice just making your wheel go around very smoothly using your feet. So put your feet on your treadles. I normally just use my right foot, but you can do whatever feels most comfortable for you and what your wheel is set up for. Just reach down with your hand, slowly get it started in the direction you want. My wheel makes a tiny little bit of noise. I love that noise though. What you're practicing for is to get it to really smoothly go around. And it might seem like that's just so simple, why do I have to practice? But I really want you to practice until you can do this without thinking about it at all. I want your body to learn this muscle memory, keeping this wheel going around, and how it feels to do that without even thinking about it. Because that will make it so much easier for you when you start drafting with your two hands. I've seen so many people just sit down and try to immediately start spinning yarn and you are trying to think about so many things at once what are my feet doing am I going too fast am I feeding into the wheel at the correct speed is my drafting good fast enough all those things when you learn to do this without thinking it will really free up your brain to think about the next part while you keep that wheel going and then when you feel super comfortable with clockwise go ahead and practice counterclockwise the same way. And I know that it might seem like, oh, come on, if clockwise is fine, counterclockwise is gonna be fine. It really is better to just make sure that you have this set in stone with your body. Practice the other way because we will need it when we get to plying your yarn. Once you feel comfortable, try to keep your treadling a little bit slower. In the beginning, when you're also learning to draft with your hands, when we move on to the next steps, going slower will just give you a little more time to get your yarn the way that you want it before you build up twist and feed it into the wheel if your wheel is going a little more slowly. Later on down the line, you're gonna sometimes wanna go so fast and that's totally fine. By then you'll be ready. But for now, try to control this wheel going a little bit slowly. Challenge yourself to get it going as smoothly as you can, as slowly as you can. And I have heard people say that sometimes singing a little song in their head helps. The one I hear recommended the most is Row, Row, Row Your Boat, if you know that, but try letting a little slow song go in your head while you do it sounds silly but it will really keep you in a rhythm and it'll also help slow you down if you keep your song slow. Once you've got your trailing going really smoothly, come back for the next lesson. We're gonna use that commercial yarn to start to work our hands and our feet together at once without the pressure of drafting.